Say his name, Laquan McDonald. 16, 16 shots were fired within 15 seconds into the body of 17 year old Laquan McDonald. Laquan was, was born September 25th, 1997 and had recently turned 17 October 10th, 2014, the night he was murdered. The 17 years of Laquan's life were a living hell, his words. From the age of three, Laquan's home life was erratic and unstable. He was removed from his mother's custody, Tina Hunter, in 2000 for neglect. Two weeks before Christmas, the state of Illinois was granted temporary custody. Laquan was placed in a foster home, but removed for alleged abuse. February 2000, he was moved to an unnamed relative for less than seven months. How does a state have custody of a child, but doesn't know the name of the person he lived with for seven months? Just asking. On September 17, 2001, Laquan moved to his great grandmother, Goldie Hunter, but again was returned to his mother on May 8, 2002, but removed again in June 2003 when it was determined that her boyfriend was abusing five-year-old Laquan. In July 2003, Laquan returned to his great-grandmother's house and she became his legal guardian in January 2008. Finally, life seemed to be turning in Laquan's favor when his great-grandmother died in the summer of 2013. Laquan was 15. Laquan was alone and homeless again. He was placed in a residential center. At 17, Laquan was attending an alternative high school and worked in the youth advocates program after school. By all accounts, he was considered a good student and attended classes regularly and was making an effort to change the direction of his life. Laquan had resilience. He fought to overcome mental health struggles, involvement with drugs and gangs, and was surviving as a ward of the state but Laquan did not survive the encounter with police Jason Van Dyke. October 10, 2014, at approximately 10 p.m., five officers responded to a call on South Polanski Road in Chicago for a report of cars being vandalized. The facts are disputed, but the truth of Laquan's murder would never have been revealed if not for investigative reporting of journalists and a whistleblower that revealed the existence of a video that recorded Laquan's murder. The city of Chicago denied the release of the video footage 15 times and it took more than a year before it was released to the public. Laquan's executioner was police Jason Van Dyke. Van Dyke was a 14 year veteran of the Chicago Police Department and had had 20 citizen complaints filed against him beginning in 2001, but not one resulted in disciplinary action. Of the 20 complaints, 10 alleged excessive force and in two firearms were used. Would Laquan be alive if Van Dyke had been disciplined or fired? Just asking. Van Dyke was on the scene for less than 30 seconds and began shooting approximately six seconds after getting out of his car. Does 10-year-old Tamir Rice come to mind? The video shows Van Dyke advancing on Laquan as Laquan is walking away. When Van Dyke fired the first shot that hit Laquan, it spun Laquan and he fell to the ground. Van Dyke fired more shots into him, 16 gunshots in 15 seconds, expending the maximum capacity of his nine millimeter semi-automatic weapon. The autopsy pictures show that Laquan was shot in his chest, neck, back, arms, right leg, and a grazed wound to his left scalp. Nine of the 16 shots hit Laquan in the back. Van Dyke shot Laquan as he lay on the ground. Journalists noted inconsistencies between the story the police had told and the autopsy report. However, it was the video that led to charges against Van Dyke and three other officers. No video and the impending cover-up would have succeeded. The police report had approximately 400 pages of trumped up, drummed up, handwritten, and typed report. The police report failed to document how many times Laquan was shot, 
but continually emphasized that Laquan was acting crazed and lunged at officers after refusing to drop the knife he had used to slash the tires of a patrol car. The numerous police narratives all portrayed Laquan as the aggressor, and they had no choice but to shoot him as they feared for their lives. The video shows Laquan walking away. Five police videos of the incident are known to exist. There were eight police cars, but footage is missing from three of the cars with multiple official excuses for those missing in dash videos. Sound was missing when the video was initially released. Why? According to the police, in-car camera systems automatically engage both the audio and video recording when the vehicle's emergency roof lights are activated. Also, Van Dyke's patrol car had been intentionally vandalized after Laquan's murder. The security camera at a nearby Burger King captured the shooting, but there is a gap of 86 minutes in the recording. The manager of the restaurant reported that five Chicago police had gained access to the video and passwords. When the police review authority requested the footage the next day, it had been erased. Coincidence or cover up? Van Dyke was charged with first degree murder the day the video was released. He posted 10% of a $1,500,000 bail. Van Dyke was indicted by a grand jury on six counts of first degree murder and one count of official misconduct. On October 5th, 2018, Van Dyke was found guilty of second degree murder and 16 counts of aggravated battery with a firearm, but not guilty of official misconduct. He was sentenced to six years and nine months for the second degree murder conviction. The Attorney General's request to impose a sentence on each of the 16 aggravated battery counts was denied without comment. Van Dyke served three years of his sentence on the grounds of good behavior. Three officers charged with conspiracy, official misconduct, and obstruction of justice connected to the cover-up of the shooting were acquitted of cover-up charges. Laquan's estate received a $5 million settlement approved by the Chicago City Council. Notably, Laquan's family hadn't filed a wrongful death lawsuit. However, emails from Ron Emanuel, the mayor of Chicago, reveal that the settlement was finalized the day after Ron Emanuel secured his second term runoff election. Is it a coincidence that part of the settlement agreement required that the video be sealed until investigations were completed. The city council was not shown the dash cam video before approving the settlement. Approval of the settlement took only five seconds out of a two hour, 45 minute meeting. The business of paying for police murdering unarmed black people doesn't take long. Just saying. Seven months before his death, Laquan shared with the court clinician while in a juvenile detention facility that his great grandmother had encouraged him to be his own man and he wished he had done more to help her when she was ill, he said. Yet despite his problems, he said, he was never suicidal. I love my life even though it is hell, he said. When asked to list three words to describe himself, Laquan was at a loss to come up with even one. But in response to questions about his goals, Laquan said he wanted to go to college and become a nurse. If he could have anything, Laquan said, he would like for his grandmother to be alive again, to have enough money to live and to start his life over again, according to the court files. Laquan never got that chance, a chance to start again. Say his name, Laquan. MacDonald.